Abba, my Father, I just want to praise you and I just want to thank you, Father. Thank you for your word, Father. Thank you that you are the one that is the messenger, the one that needs to bring the message. I thank you, my Father, that I'm just the mouthpiece, but the message comes from the messenger that is you that delivers the message. I'm just the mouthpiece, Father. And I just want to thank you, Father, that you alone will be able to come and speak a word that only you can speak, a word that comes from your heart. I thank you, Father, because there is just so much to be put together in this time, in this hour. There's just so much that you are wanting to be able to relate to your people. And, Father, I just ask you, Father, that you open up the mind of my understanding, (coughs) that you will come and help me to be able to be reminded of everything that you are wanting to say in order for us to understand the season, the timing, as we are now in a new season. And the season that we've entered into now is the season having to prepare us now for our next feast, the feast of Yom Teruah, as we now enter this next five, six months in order to prepare ourselves to be able to receive from you what it is that we need to be able to understand the preparation that you are preparing us for because we are in a critical hour. We are in a very critical hour. And so I thank you, my Father, that you will come and that you open up the minds of our understanding. We do not want to understand just with a Logos word. We want to understand with a Rhema word that is going to be able to speak deep into our hearts to understand what it is that you are wanting to say to us in this hour, what it is that you are wanting to be able to show us in this hour Because you are constantly speaking, but are we listening? And so, my Father, I praise you. I thank you. I praise you and I thank you for that which you are wanting to be able to relay to us in this hour. I thank you, Father, that you would open up the word for us to understand that This is not about, we have not been put on this earth for ourselves, but that we have been put on this earth to make a difference. And a difference we are to be able to make. And so, my Father, I just want to praise you and I just want to thank you. I just want to commit this time to you right now. And I just want to thank you, Father, that you alone will grant me the grace that I need in order to be able to unpack this word, precept by precept, line by line, in order for us to understand what you are saying and what you are revealing in this hour. I praise and I thank you for this in Yahushua's name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, praise the Father that when I sat down and the Father really impressed this upon my heart from last week, there has been this urgency in my heart where the Father is really speaking to me in this hour because people are to a degree distracted. People are not understanding the seriousness of the hour that we are in, and they are still very distracted by the things of this world. And so the Father started to impress upon my heart 
where he, when I come back, you know, when I am sitting there, you know, he's doing things and I'm getting a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit of this. As I was sitting in Israel, as I was sent there by him and how he answered prayer that was just beyond me, how he orchestrated everything. And what is he saying in the midst of everything? What is he saying? And so, as you come back, and you come back to an earthly realm, not that I was not in an earthly realm there, but you want to understand, there were days, for the 10 days that I was doing the assignment, and not every day was I able to be at the Southern Steps, but even if I wasn't at the Southern Steps, we were trying as much as possible to spend as much time. I was trying to spend as much time with the Father, irrespective in those last 10 days, to be able to be in His presence. So when you're spending between five to six hours in a day with the Father, you have to understand that it's His heartbeat that is going to start beating through you and not your own. And this was a very strenuous, difficult assignment. It wasn't easy. It was the exact opposite of last year. Where last year, there was so much more distraction. And there was the weather was totally different from this year to last year. Last year, I didn't take any warm jacket. And eventually, I had to, a, a lot of the times, I was using my friend Lee Taylor's jacket. Where eventually, I had to go buy myself a jacket because it was cold. This time, it was the heat. So this time, we were in temperatures that re ranged from nothing less than 36 to 40 was the temperature that we were with. I mean, there were nights that we would, you know, be walking home and it was still 34, 35 degrees at night. So by the time it was the peak of the day, when it gets to like 2 o'clock the afternoon, when you are in the peak of the day, it easily could have gone to over 40. And here I am in this heat. And so it was almost like the father turning up the heat. Because when the heat is turned up, what comes to surface? The impurities of the heart need to be dealt with. Because we've got to go through the firmness of the fire. And this is what is interesting because what is Shavuot about? And what was it that he wanted to release? He wanted to release not only the Ruach, but his fire that needed to come forth. So it was the Ruach with the fire. Because like I said, many people have received the Ruach of Yahuwah, but very few are willing to go through the baptism, the mikvah of fire. And the mikvah of the fire is what needs to be able to come and burn out of us everything that is not of Him. And so, strangely enough, prophetically, in a physical way, I was undergoing what he's doing in the prophetic in terms of what needed to be released upon the earth at the time of this Shavuot. Because I'll read from Matthew chapter 2 and it just so happens that I opened the Bible here. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 11 says, Indeed, I indeed immerse you with water. This is Yohuchanan. And Yohuchanan was, was speaking to, to the people as they were coming up to be baptized. And Yohuchanan said, I indeed immerse you in water but un, unto repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals are not worthy to bear. And he shall immerse you in the set apart spirit and fire. Now, understand, if you look at this, he says, I immerse you in water unto repentance. So the church has been in a place, the people have been in the place in the repentance and the repentance. But we've got to go past repentance into the place of restoration. Now, one thing that I have understood, 
And this is what the Father has showed me over the, this last week. Is that when you go to somebody and you ask them to forgive you, it is a choice whether they forgive you or not. It is a choice. So you can go to somebody and you can ask them to forgive you for something that you've done. But if that person holds into, uh, holds onto the bitterness and that which was done to them and they want you to pay for what you have done, there will be no forgiveness in the end because they will not forgive you. Now you can't force people to forgive you. You can go and say you're sorry. You can go and ask them to forgive you. But it's their heart's wickedness whether they receive the forgiveness or not. If they want you to pay for what you've done, once you've asked for forgiveness, once you've come to the person and said, I forgive, uh, please forgive me for what I've done, then that means the blood of Yeshua does not come and set that person free because you are not willing to set the person free. And let me tell you, yesterday I was with a woman that a year ago I said to her, you need to forgive the people for what has happened. You need to forgive the people for what has happened because there was a circumstance that happened. And I said to her, I understand that what the man did was wrong. I understand. But you cannot hold it. He's got to pay for what he's done. And I looked at her and I said to her, the father is the one that will make sure that that person will pay for what they've done. But you are to release the person in your heart. She didn't do it. A few months later, I found her. She was sick, so sick. Oh my goodness, when I looked upon her, I couldn't believe that this was the same person. I couldn't believe it. And again I said to her, because she's got this lawsuit against this man, and she wants this man to pay for what he has done. But every time she spoke, all she could speak about was the lawsuit and how this man, what has he done? And nobody, nobody is bringing him to task. Nobody is allowing him to get the punishment that he deserves because how could he do what he did? Now, it's about a sexual case. The man didn't go, he sort of like molested two of her daughters. So you must understand, as a mother, she is saying, he's got to pay. Now, I'm not going to say that we are to excuse the person for what they've done, but if that person has come before the Father and that person has repented, you on the other side are not to stand in judgment. You don't know. We are not to judge. And so I stood as a mediator with her the whole time saying to her, look, I'm not going to excuse that the man, what he's done is wrong. And if he's not willing to admit to his sin, which he was not willing to admit, if he was not willing to admit to it, then it means that he's not going to get the true repentance. But if he's admitted to the sin, which he did not want to, in the beginning he did, but then because of a lawsuit, he said no. It wasn't the way that it was. Irrespective of what has been done, she was to forgive him. But you see, the bitterness of soul for the wounds that she has within her heart has brought tormentors upon her yesterday, a year later from when I told her, release this man, forgive him. She's, I, I looked at her, it was almost like she's been on death's door and I couldn't believe what she looks like. 
It was almost like a corpse standing in front of me. It was very scary. And I looked at her and I said, for the sake of your children, you need to let this thing go now. Well, she wakes up every morning now and she's blessing. So she's now starting to bless him. She's now starting to release him. She said, you know what? The thing is going to go to court and when it's finished, it's finished. I don't want to do I don't want to focus on it anymore. Finally, she's at a place of releasing. Now, beloveds, how many of us are sick in our bodies because we are not willing to give someone forgiveness who asks for forgiveness? And even if they don't forgive you, there's a difference between if you've done something wrong and you go to someone and you ask them to forgive you. That person has a choice whether they want to forgive you or not. But if somebody has done you wrong, everything in you must forgive that person for what they have done. And I tell you now, we are going to see now where tormentors are going to start coming to torment us because we are not willing to forgive. Now, I've understood something that the Father showed me. If there's true forgiveness, there's reconciliation. If there's no true forgiveness, there will be no reconciliation. Because if the person doesn't truly forgive you, they will not reconcile with you. And that's what the Father showed. So we have to understand that the Father is taking us now deep to deal with the things in us the fire must come and purge what is in us that's not of him if we are still reacting to the way people treat us or to things people say or to things people do then you have to understand that the father now is turning up the heat and that was the heat that I had to walk in, that I had to sit in, that I had to experience. You know, even if you get a little bit of shade, in the shade, it's not going to take away the heat that you are experiencing. And then at times, the father would say, now, I need you to go and dance. And I'd say, my father, this is the heat of the day. My child, this is what you need to do. You all saw, those of you that were live with us when I was on the southern steps, and that was just after 9 o'clock in the morning, you saw how our phones did not want to correspond with us because they were overheating. So hot was it. The heat is now turning up. And the only reason why I understand that the heat is turning up, you, you are not going to get away with whatever you got away with before. I tell you now, after this Shavuot, you are not going to get away with what you got away with before because the heat is now turned up. And I'll tell you why. Because when I got sick, the, my, my friend, this prophet friend of mine in Israel, I said to her, please, she, she was sending me stuff. I said, please pray for me. I've woken up this morning. I'm not well. I'm not feeling well. I've got this cold and flu, whatever, trying to come upon me. The first thing she said to me, oh, do you have a fence in your heart? Did you get offended about something? Normally, colds and flus can come with a fence. I said, a fence? Did I get offended? Wow. It didn't take me long. The minute she said that, it didn't take me long for me to sit down and say, Father, did I by any chance take offense? And he showed me that I did. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't something that it was, I didn't even see it that I was getting offended. I didn't even see that I actually did take offense. I didn't see it as being offense. I just saw it as that, I got upset about it, but I didn't see it, that I took offense. But when he sat me down and took me back to my behavior, to what I was thinking, to what I was feeling, to what I was, what, what I was going through because of the circumstance, 
I realized, but wait a second, that is what I did. I did take offense. And now, apply the blood, come and sit down and release the people and release the situation to the Father and forgive and release and apply the blood and come and get over it. And now, re- receive his embrace. So I say to you now, you are not going to get away with that which is going to be in your heart anymore. Because he's going to poke you. He's going to bring it to you. You are going to see what is going to transpire in your life. And you better be aware. You better be. That's why I need to speak the message. You better be aware. Because if this thing is still going on in your life, I tell you now, you have to sit down and check what is in your life and you will see where you did not do right. Where you have issues in your heart. And that is why right now, the message that the Father is bringing is he's bringing to surface Everything. He's going to clean us up. I need you to understand. We are about to go into the darkest hour of this, of, of yet that we have seen in our lifetime, our lifetime that we are living in, our lifetime. I'm not talking about from before. I'm talking our lifetime. You are about to see the darkest hour of our lifetime. That we are living in right now. That we are going to see things. And we are going to experience things. That is going to be seriously difficult. We are about to see things manifesting upon the earth. Because I'm about to give you the prophetic word. That the Father has released to me. For you to understand There is no more delaying in what Father has spoken. If he said something, it's going to be. You are going to see it manifesting like this in your face. And so that is why I'm saying, just as he has said, if that is going to manifest, if prophetic things are going to manifest, then you must understand in your life it's going to manifest because he's not going to allow us to get away with anything anymore. So he's cleaning us up. And that is why I'm saying to you, you are not going to get away with what you got away with before. And if you do, you, will, you are going to see how there's going to be people that are going to drop dead. Hear me when I say to you, people are going to drop dead because that's the word that he gave me. It's the word he gave me. And this is a harsh word. This is not an easy word. But we are not going to be able to carry on. And you've got to understand, your salvation is at stake if you're going to continue to not want to release, to not want to be able to allow the Ruach of Yahuwah to do his process in you. Your salvation will be at stake. Now, you've got to understand, if there's one thing that the Father has highlighted very clearly to me over these last two weeks since I got back, and that is this one thing. Many. When he says many, he means many. When he says many, he means multitudes. It's many. Have you ever thought of many? If he says it's many, he means many. If he says it's few, he means few. He's not a man that he should lie. If his word has spoken and said many, then you better take note of the fact that if he says many, many will come to me in that day and say, Yoshua, I cast out demons in your name. I prophesied in your name. And he says, depart from me, you children of iniquity. You practiced lawlessness. Then you better understand that it is many. If he says, broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many will walk in that way. And narrow is the road that leads to life. And few 
will find it, then you better understand few. And that is what he's highlighted to me. And that is the revelation that I have understood over these last two weeks. What does he mean by many? What does he mean by few? Because there are many and there are few. And this is what we've got to understand. So there are things right now we have to understand that we've got to be in a place to understand. Clean up our hearts. Clean up our hearts. And this is why I'm going to take you to understand from the beginning when we left, the father was doing a work. And the work that he was doing started already on the two planes that we went on. The first plane was 404. It had a 44. And interesting enough, like our seats would be like my seat was 44. My seat was 44 going. My seat was 44 coming. 44 keeps coming up in my mind. Keeps coming up everywhere I turn. 44. Still now I get, I see 44. The plane was 404. My coming, when we, when that was going to Addis Ababa. So our main flight, flying, was 404. No. When we left here to Addis Ababa was 808. So 808. It's double four, double four. Four plus four, eight. Four plus four, eight. Double eight. Double four. To make the eight. Double door, double door, double door, double door. 88, 44 and 88. Eight being new beginning. Double portion of the new thing I'm about to do. But the one flying from here to, te, to um, Tel Aviv was 404, 44. 44. So everything of what the father was saying to me was, my child, that which you are going to is going to be able to be doors that you need to be able to understand. I'm going to open doors. I'm going to close doors. And there's a double portion of whatever it is that's going to happen because it's not just one four. It's a double four. It's not just one eight. It's a double eight. It is a double portion. I'm going to be able to open doors of double portion. And so that was what he was already imprinting in my Hot. And from the time that we landed, there was doors being opened. If this was the, uh, and I've been to Israel 20 something times. I don't even know. I don't even have a number to be able to give you because it's so many times backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards going to Israel since 2006. I've been flying to Israel backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards until I lived there two years and then even in those two years, in and out, in and out because every three months we had to leave and come back and leave and come back. And out of all those times, this was the easiest, the quickest that we've ever come into the land. Literally, two questions asked. What is your purpose for being here? I'm coming for Shavuot. And where are you? Where, what, 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 what did he say? I'm coming for Shavuot. How long are you here for? I said we fly out on the 17th, 18th of June. Okay. Enjoy your stay. Go. That's it. Going out, it was just as quick. The other man, I saw my goodness, interrogation, interrogation. All she said to me was, what is your purpose? Did, did you pack your own bag? Yes. What was your purpose for being here? I said, I came for the hagim. I was here for, no, I said, I came for Shavuot. Is this your first time here? I said, no, I come off and I come for the hagim. Wow, I don't even know that I even knew this word. I remembered this word. I don't even know it came to me. My friend that is studying Hebrew, um, Halani, she keeps talking to me about the Hagim, about the festivals, the holidays. I had that word in my mouth, so I just said to her, I come often for the Hagim. Okay, no problem. Enjoy your flight. Off I go. Normally, it's more interrogation and more, and more questions and more questions. She just put the sticker on my 
bag and off we went. That was it. It's a door that is opened because he's opening the doors. So the doors in our life that has been shut has been opened. So that brings me to the most significant day. I mean, I sat with the Father. There's many days that he gave me many things. But he got me to zone in on the on the, the day that he wants to zone in on, which is the 44th day of the counting of the Omer. On the 44th day. Because everything about this 44th day is so significant. Because it's the third day of the third month. So there, double, three, three. Third day of the third month. It is the 10th of June. 10, significant number. Completion. Spiritual perfection. Spiritual completion. And then it was 44th day. So, on this 44th day, I'm going to share with you prophetically what the Father has given. And so from here, we are going to go deep in the understanding of the prophetic things that are needing to unfold. Okay, so as I was leaving home, there was a car in front of me. And for some reason, there was a, a I don't know if these cars are like, tech, they're like this um taxi cars or whatever, but it had a number on it. And the number was 4020. 4020. And he said to me, remember that number, 4020. I said, okay, Father. So I was walking, making a mental note of, I need to remember 4020. Straight after that, I saw another one of those, another car. <coughs> and the number on it was 4093. And he said, make a note of that number. So I had to make a note of the number 4020. I had to make a note of the number 4093. So the first thing that I did when I arrived at my destination, which is like three and a half kilometers later, when I arrived at the southern steps, the first thing that I did is I took out my journal and I wrote down 4020. And I wrote down 4093 because I had to remember those two numbers. Because he was going to talk to me about those two numbers. And then, as I was walking, as I came down the steps leading to Damascus Gate, so as I was going down the steps, and I was going to go through Damascus Gate in order for me to be able to go walk my walk, to be able to go past the Katal, past the Western Wall, coming to the Southern Steps, that was my route that I would walk every day, all of a sudden, on the floor in front of me was a key. It was a key. And it was Lee Taylor who then, when I showed her, I said, today I was given a key. And she said, a key? I said, yes, I showed her the key. She says, that's a key to a door. That's like a physical key to a physical door. It's like someone's house key. So the father didn't just give you any key. He gave you a key to a house door. It's the door to a house. So it was one of these keys that you get for when you're going to open the front door of your house. And this key was lying on the floor. And I thought, wow, Father, you give me a key. And I got all excited about the key that he gave me. And as I was walking, I was thinking, okay, Father, something today needs to be happening with the key. Now, understand, when I went and sat down, I didn't realize that this day was the 44th day of the counting of the Omer because when I would get to the southern steps, then I would open up my Bible, I would put my little sticker in my, my, my book, and then I would start writing and spending time with the Father, thanking Him for whatever day it was that we are in for the counting of the Omer. And then I realized, wow, you gave me a key on the 44th day of the counting of the Omar, where there is a four, and there is a four, and the four also being the fourth letter of the alphabet, meaning a door. So then I realized, okay, Father, there is a double door. There is two doors. You are giving me a key for two doors. What am I supposed to do with these keys, Father? What am I supposed to do with this key? Is there a door that you are wanting me to open?
Is there a door that you wanted me to close? What are you wanting me to do with this key? So this was my question. From the time I sat down, I wrote down 4020, I wrote down 4093, and I said, okay, Father, you have my attention. What are you trying to tell me with a key? And what are you trying to tell me with a, these two numbers? So I sat down, and so he said, Go write down 4020 and go to the concordance reference of 4020. So 4020, H4020. So write down 4020, H4020. It means to set bounds, a border, a twist as a rope, twisted. So this was going to give me an understanding G4020. So, H4020 is to set bounds, a border, to twist as a rope, twisted cords. So, G4020, on the other hand, is to bustle about uselessly, to busy oneself with useless matters. To be a busy body. So the father was trying to give me a message from this number. And what was he saying? The time has come now, my child. You need to set borders. Now, I need you to understand. In the beginning, this message was for me. Because I didn't think that this message is for anybody else other than me. He's giving me a key. He's giving me numbers. It's about me. But only in this last week did the father speak to me and say to me, my child, this is not about you. This is about a message that just like it was for you, you got the message first, but it's a message that I'm relaying to my people. Because I need you to be able to speak to my people. Because just like it's for you, it's for them. So, when you look at these two numbers, what is the Father saying? We are to set boundaries. We are to set a border. A rope. So, if you look at this twisted rope, you can look at this two ways. The enemy will want to come and twist things if you don't have boundaries. It becomes a twisted rope. If there's no boundary, it's going to get twisted. There will be twisted rope. But also, a cords of a rope, three cords, a three-cord strand cannot be broken. So the Father says, when you have put boundaries in place, nothing can come in to break the boundaries that are there. Don't allow the enemy's twisted way to come. And bring deception and destruction. And how do you do that? By not allowing yourself to become busy with things that is not important. Do not busy yourself with the affairs of others. How much time do we spend on the affairs of others? How much time do we concern ourselves with what is going on in the world? My goodness, you cannot put on your phone now and you'll just hear about the next scandal and the next scandal and the next scandal and the next thing and the next thing that's going on and this thing that's going to happen. Don't busy yourself. Don't waste your hours that you have where you're supposed to be spending time with me. Because that's what the enemy will use to come and twist you, to come and bring all these thoughts and all these things into you that will come and twist your foundation with me, that will come and twist you in the place that you're supposed to be with me because you are going to busy yourself with things that's not even of the kingdom. And that is what the devil wants to do to come and steal our time. So you are to busy yourself 
with the things pertaining to the kingdom, with the things pertaining to being able to make sure that your life is going to reflect Him, that you, that you are growing in the things of the Father, that you are changing from glory to glory, that you are putting boundaries and you are not allowing people to come, the enemy to come, to bring destruction in your life, to make you focus on things that right now is not important. It's going to steal your time. It's going to steal the peace that's supposed to be in you to busy yourself with more about the things of the devil as opposed to busying, busying yourself with the things of the kingdom. You know what? It's not that we don't need to know what's going on. But to spend all your time and all your hours and focusing and listening to all these things, that's not important. What do we spend our time on? And those things open doors to steal your joy, to make you fear. The, the devil wants to bring fear mongering into your life. And then you wonder why then the door gets open for sickness, for disease, for this. Because as a man thinks in his mind, so will he become. And you open yourself up unnecessarily to things. Like Job. When Job opened the door to the fear that was coming by going to build this altar for the children that were busy doing because he was focusing, oh my goodness, I've got to build an altar because my children are not where they need to be. Everything that he feared came upon him. What are we doing? What are we spending our time on? We are in a critical hour, beloveds. We are in a very critical hour. And the way that you're going to spend your time now is going to make the difference to where you're going to stand or whether you're not going to stand. So that was in the 420. Then he gave me H4093. H4093 is the word mother. And this word is knowledge. It's thought. It's place of knowledge. It's intelligence or consciousness to know. So it's the word to know. So it's part of the root word that comes from yada. So mada comes from the root word yada, which means to know. So it was interesting because when it said intelligence, it reminds me of the special intelligence. You are supposed to have special intelligence. You are supposed to have like a, you're supposed to be part of these special forces on the earth. Just like Israel has their special forces that know exactly the intelligence of what's going on with the enemy and they're able to send their snipers to go and take out an, an enemy. They, they're able to find out exactly where the leader is of this people and send in a special force to take them out. That comes from special intelligence. That comes from a special force. So the Father is wanting to give us this special knowledge. This, 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 this knowledge that he wants to reveal to us in the time that we are in. To become like his sniper on the earth. To take out the enemy and how the enemy is attacking us and attacking his people. Wow, I tell you, wow, 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 how this word has spoken to me within this last week. Because it's like the Father gives me, has been giving me prophetic word through people's mouths, giving me prophetic word to say the Father wants to take you higher into the knowledge of a deeper revelation. And you don't understand that deeper revelation. And now I'm starting to understand. It doesn't help me to keep standing before people that I'm praying for and praying for. And I'm getting frustrated with because they're not changing. But what are you doing to be able to help in the changing process? If you don't have the special forces, intelligence that he's going to give you on how to be able to come up against the enemy that is destroying their lives, then how are you going to set them free? Hear me what I'm saying to you today. Hear me that we are not operating at the level that we are called to be. The Father is now. When He says, I'm taking you into a higher realm, I'm taking you, you are supposed to be doing the greater works on the earth. We have this idea that we're going to wake up 
the morning and we are going to be transformed and now all of a sudden we've got all this power and all of a sudden we're opening blind eyes and healing sick and meantime behind the scenes he says he's changing us from glory to glory day by day so as we're walking with him we are being transformed now listen to the power that's coming out of this G4093. Well, I tell you, right now I've even got goosebumps all over me when I think of how powerful Father's Word is. This word, 4093, means a table, a dish, a plate, a platter. So understand, if you come and eat from his table, if you come eat from his platter, he will give you the special intelligence, the knowledge, the thought, the consciousness that you should have in the place that you find yourself, in the place of where you need to help others to be set free, to be able to come and deliver them. Deliver yourself. But what are we doing we are busying ourselves, distracted, because why? We have not set boundaries. We are busy. We are busy with so many useless things, yet the enemy has us bound. The enemy keeps us captive. The enemy, and yet every day, he sets a table before us in the presence of our enemies, which is what the Father said. I set a table before you, my child, in the presence of your enemy, so that the enemy does not come and overtake you. But do you come and eat from my table? Do you come and get my platter? That I have to give you so that you know how to overcome the enemy in that area. Oh, wow. I tell you, I am not the same person. I am not the same person that flew on those flights to Israel. I am not the same person that came back. I am not. The person that came back is not the same person that flew there. I am not. Because I am not going to stand back and allow the enemy to come in and destroy and kill and steal and destroy and I'm going to stand back and say, oh, wow, you know what? It's just one of those things. No, 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 no. I have, the, the, the Bible says that you have, you are the one that has to arise. To, Yeshua says he's given us the authority to go and set the captives free, to go and loose the bonds that is upon the people. What are we doing? We are not doing it. You know why we are not doing it? Because at the end of the day, we have not come. We do not have discernment. We do not know. We do not know. We do not come to learn to know. We do not perceive. We do not discern. We do not know by experience. We are not acquainted. We have not been revealed. We do not recognize we have not received instruction. So therefore, we are defeated in so many different areas of our lives and we are not walking in the fullness of the authority that the Father has given us because we are distracted. You see, if the enemy can get you distracted, Oh, wow. You know, let him just give you, let him distract you with things that's not even important. People are listening to stuff and distracting themselves with teachings and things that's not even life-changing at all. But they will listen to it and they will go to Bible school and they will go to this thing and this thing and this thing. And all these things, but to come and sit with the Father, that we don't do. Because he has the platter that he wants to give you for that day. To overcome the enemy in that day. What are you doing? So when I sat down. And when the father started to open this up to me. I thought wow father okay. So your full message is. I am to set boundaries. I am to stop busying myself with the affairs of so many things that is not going to change 
me is not going to change others, is not doing anything. And I am to come to your table. I am to eat from your table, from your platter that you have given so that I may perceive to know, so that I may be revealed, so that I may recognize what you have for me to be able to come and help this one or help that one or do this. So it doesn't help me to sit and pray for somebody that I just go and I'm just going to come and I'm just going to pray. But yet at the end of the day, I'm not helping you to be set free because I'm not hearing what is needed to set you free. Because I have not come to sit at the table to receive the platter. And I have not come to get the special intelligence that I need to be able to take out the enemy. The special intelligence that he wants to give me. I am not a sniper. I'm not being a sniper on the earth for the Father. <laughs> are you hearing me? What are we doing? He walks around like a roaring lion looking to see whom he can deceive. And what are we doing? We are being deceived on a daily basis by the things that he keeps giving us that's wasting our time. And we are listening to his vials in our ears and the things that he keeps like a broken record speaking to us. And then we go into this place of worrying still about what that one did to me and what this one did to me and what I lost here and what I lost there and what I don't have here and what I don't have there and how this one's so anointed and I'm not and, and this one and jealousies and this and that and all these things. Distractions, distractions, distractions. What are we doing, beloveds? The Father is wanting to raise up a special forces, a task force, a remnant warrior bride that's going to start to push back the darkness. I'm not saying that we're going to conquer everything. But we are supposed to be plucking some people out of the fires of hell. And we're not doing that. Because we're still playing church. Even now we're playing Torah movement, which is playing church at the end of the day again. More head knowledge. More stuff. What are we doing? I'm telling you, there is a message now that must go forth, that the Father wants to speak. So then he gave me Revelation 4, verse 1. And when I saw um, that hand being stretched out, remember on the 11th of April I had to go back and go and ask the Father, when did I see that and in my journal, it was on the 11th of April. On the 11th of April, Father stretched out his hand to us and said, take hold of my hand. Beloveds, listen to me when I say to you, if you are not going to take hold of the Father's hand now, you are going to shake out of control. And when you have finished shaking, <laughs> if you have not been shaken into position, because if you take hold of his hand, he will position you, he will steady you, he will put you where you are supposed to be. If you have not done that, then I tell you now, you are going to break. And that's what happened to me this morning. That is exactly what happened this morning. I said, Father, what on earth? What on earth? And you know what? <laughs> you know, Lee Taylor phoned me just as I was coming into Cape Town just as I'm arriving in the Cape. And she says, Natalia, please, you need to phone me. I've got an urgent message. She's mopping her floor. Nothing wrong with the mop. Absolutely nothing wrong with the mop. And it breaks in half for no rhyme or reason. She doesn't put any force on it. The whole thing breaks. And she says, I heard him say, Everything is going to break. We are now in the time of breaking. And he said to her, My shaking has begun a long time ago. Now it's time for my breaking. I heard what she said. And I thought, wow, Father. So what came up in my spirit was, you see, he sent out the fisherman. And when you bring in the fisherman that sends out his nets, and the fish get caught, there's no pain in that fish. 
They get caught in a net and they come to shore and there's no pain in the fishing. But when you send out the hunters to hunt people down, that is a very, very painful process. So this morning, I hear Elsie scream, Gracie! And I thought, what on earth now? Gracie jumps. Gracie's my cat. She jumps from, she climbed on top of the table. She jumped from the table. I don't know what on earth she did. But she jumped on top of my menorah that is standing in the corner that's got all these beautiful glasses. And she jumps on it and the whole menorah crashes to the ground. All the glasses broken apart for one. <laughs> and when I first looked at it, I thought, oh, Father, now I can't even replace these glasses. And then I thought they were all broken because, I mean, imagine if a glass, if it's a glass breaking, all the glasses are going to break. The menorah fell flat to the front. The menorah crashed, fell on the floor. Everything broken except for one glass. I thought, wow, how does everything break except for one glass? And then he said to me, how many glasses broke? I said, six. I'm going to break the arm of the flesh. I'm going to break the arm of man's flesh now. <laughs> I stood there. And as I'm hearing him say this, I thought, okay, Father. And I come and I sat down at my table and I'm putting together my message and it's just the prophetic word that's coming together. And I realize, Father, you are speaking a message now. The menorah is the light. It carries the light. You cannot carry the light as long as you are in your flesh. Your flesh has got to come to an end. And that is the message that I will continue with next week. Many are called, few are chosen. Because you've got to understand, you will not be the fullness of the light as long as you are doing it in your flesh. Father is not interested in the works of the flesh. And so all six glasses broke apart from one. And so now first with her, it was her mirror. Her mirror fell from the wall with Lee Taylor. First was the mirror. And the mirror cracked right at the bottom. The mirror's intact. It was only the frame at the bottom. It split right at the bottom. And what she saw was like the split rock. And then it was the mop. And she knew when the mirror crashed, she knew the father wasn't finished in giving her a message. Now it's interesting because both her and I, last year, we had at the, like, Mine was on the 11th of June. Hers was towards the end of June. That both of us, I went through a physical earthquake. She went through a spiritual earthquake. I was, I was in a physical earthquake on the 11th of June when I was rudely awakened and the father said, everything that can be shaken will be shaken. My goodness, I just heard a message of this man. I'm, I actually wanted to tape what he said. He repeated my words. This is a message you just sent out again. It's something that just came up, up on my phone because what happens is, you know, sometimes when I'm getting dressed or when I'm cleaning up and I'm tidying up, I put a message on. And then whatever's the next thing that's coming up, it just comes up. And then I started listening to this man. And as this man starts speaking, he says, everything that can be shaken will be shaken. I thought, my goodness, the man is speaking my message. And I was blown away by the things that this man was speaking because he was speaking a kingdom message because his ministry is a kingdom ministry. And I thought, wow. And he said, we need to get back to following Messiah. Where are we? We're playing church. We're playing church. And that's when he gave me the revelation and then the father expounded on it when he said, People are more in love with their church than they actually are with Yoshua. Because why? He's an American. He's speaking to an American people. He's speaking to so many people. They go to these mega churches and they're in love with their church and what their church has got to give them. But they're not in love with Yoshua. And then when he said that, then the father started to expound on it for me. And he said, why, my child? Why are they not in love with me? Because to love me means to obey me. They don't want to obey me. They are rebellious. 
that I want to come back to obey my laws, that I want to come back, back to obey my commands. And so the shaking already started long time ago is what he said to I've already started. The shaking has started before. It's already started a while ago. So from last year he started shaking. And if you look and see what started happening in the church, it's shaking, shaking, exposing, exposing. He's exposing, he's shaking. But now it's a breaking. So now it's so interesting. She goes through the earthquake. She, she was on the Temple Mount when she experienced a, an earthquake in the spirit. She sends me a message and she says, I can't believe, I just, I, I, I was on the Temple Mount, I, 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 the place was shaking. But I'm looking around, nobody else is experiencing this except me. It was in the spirit. And now, her broom breaks. And now, how Gracie goes flying from the table, what on earth possessed this cat? She goes flying from the table, grabs onto the cloth of the menorah, I don't know, brings the menorah crashing down. And I'm saying, okay, Father, first it was the picture of the menorah. Now it's a physical menorah having to crash to the ground. And if I look at that menorah, it was the sixth candle that was being lit on the picture of the menorah with the priest. This is now my physical menorah. Six, six cups, six of the cups on top of it crash, break, except for one. So what is the Father saying? I'm about to break. The arm of the flesh. I'm about to break man because they will not submit to me. Everything of man is going to come crashing to the ground. You cannot carry my presence in your flesh, man. It will come crashing to the ground. So there's many people running around doing many good things, many good things, many things, things that the Father never told them to do. They are busying themselves with bunch of stuff. That's the hay, the rubble, and the straw. It was not what came from Him. Just because it looks good, just because it sounds good, doesn't mean to say it's from Him. Busy yourself. When you come to a plate, when you come to the platter, when you come to the table, it's a table, a dish, a plate, a platter. When you come to the table, he will give you the dish and the platter that you are supposed to have for that day. I can't bring it across any more way than what he's speaking right now. And you are going to understand for however many days, however many weeks I'm supposed to preach this message because it's just when I sat down at this table, I said, oh, Father, this is bigger than I understand. So we will close off with Revelation chapter 4. So when he showed me that hand stretched out, he wanted to stay. It was a hand stretched out and saying, take my hand, take my hand so that I can steady you, so that I can hold you. You will be secure when you take my hand. I will stop the shaking and I will bring you up here to where I am. Come up here. Take my hand, let me lift you out of the muddy clay. Take my hand, let me lift you out of the place where you are bound and shaking. And let me steady you. The devil has been shaking you in your life long enough. It's time that I take you out of the place where he has had the right to shake you and break you. Let me take you out of there. Come to where I am so that I can give you the plate that I have to give you so that you have the wisdom that you need in order to be able to be my sniper and take him out. Your job is to draw close to me so that I give you the authority and the power to come and break the bondage of my people. How do you break the bondage of my people when you yourself are still bound in the same things? So in Revelation 4 verse 1, and this was the scripture he gave me because it was the key, it's the door, it's the fall, it's the door. And then it took me to Revelation 4 verse 1. 
and it says, After this I looked, and I saw a door, having been opened in the heaven. Father says, I've opened the door. I've given you the key to open the door for my people to return back to me. I've opened the door so that everything that must be released upon the earth is now going to be released. You will understand this next week with the prophetic word that I'm going to give you that he gave me. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking to me saying, Come up here and I shall show you what has to take place after this. If you don't come up, he cannot show you what needs to take place, beloved. Because we are wasting our time. We are distracted. We are busy with a lot of things. But it's not what he wants. Let us pray. Abba Yahuwah. I thank you, Father. I thank you for your word, Father. I thank you that your word is going to come and shake out of us everything that's not that's to be shaken. And Father, <laughs> you are going to break now. You are going to break the arm of the flesh. You are going to break the arm of the flesh. You are wanting to raise up a priesthood and you are not joking when you are manifesting it physically and showing constantly to your prophetic people what you are doing. And for those that have ears, let them hear what the Spirit of Yahuwah is saying. And so I thank you, Father, that we will have those that will have ears to hear what you are saying. It's now time for us to be able to break loose, come forth, birth, walk out, our destiny that has been placed before us. Walk out the fullness of the scroll that you have given for our lives. O oh, Abba Yahuwah, I pray help us. Help us in the hour that we are in that we will stop being distracted with so many things going on around us. The devil is orchestrating all these things to take our focus off what we should be focusing on. To come and set the captives free. To come and heal the, the, those that are broken hearted. To come and do the work. To preach a message that brings people delivered and healed. Because there's no authority. We are not operating in the resurrection power of our Messiah, Yahushua. But now is the hour, my Father. Come and deliver us from everything that would keep us captive and bound by the distractions in our lives and help us to come to that table to eat from the platter that you have to give us that the door has been opened, that you have stretched out your hand, that we take hold of your hand and we say, we will come up higher with you. We want to be seated with you in heavenly places. You have need of us in this hour. You have need of a warrior bride that must take her place in the name of Yoshua. I pray this. Hallelujah. Thank you, Abba Yahuwah, for your ironic blessing, that we may be able to pray your ironic blessing over us. Yevarechecha, Yahuwah v'ishmarecha, Yair, Yahuwah panavelecha, v'ichonecha, Yasa, Yahuwah panavelecha, v'yasem lecha, shalom. Yahuwah bless you and keep you. Yahuwah make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. You will lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, give you his shalom. Shabbat shalom.